online with the Blue Mountain Salvos. Today we're continuing our January series where we're looking at a specific word or theme found in the scriptures and we're using some of the resources developed by the Bible Project to help us explore those themes or that word a little bit deeper and, and have a greater understanding of what the biblical authors were trying to communicate in their use of this word or this theme. And today's word is the Hebrew word Shema, which means to hear or listen. If there is anything that has given me insight into just how patient God is with humankind and just how infuriating we must be to him sometimes as a species, it's parenthood. As a parent of young children, I'm constantly being reminded that my role as their parent is uh, not to make sure I have perfectly behaved children right now, but to train them, to coach them, so that they grow up to be fully functioning adults in the world, that they um, are able to reason and make good decisions, and that they're able to contribute positively to society. You see, this might sound obvious, but children are not adults. They don't come with a preloaded uh, idea about what behaviours are okay and what behaviours just aren't acceptable. They're not able to pick up on certain social cues automatically or even understand those unspoken expectations we or other adults might have on them as kids. Take my daughter Nora, for example. She's just turned four and she has a multiple ways of interpreting instructions that are given to her. Just Friday morning, we were all ready um, to head out the door to drop the kids off to school, to daycare, and uh, we just all we had to do to get out the door was find Nora's drink bottle. Anyway, she was playing with a toy that she was given uh, at her birthday last year, which was uh, one of those leap pads. It's not an iPad, but we call it an iPad. And I said to her, sweetheart, put that away and go and find your drink bottle so that we can go to school. Okay, mummy, was her sweet little response. And I thought to myself, gee, I have good kids, good kids who listen and obey, sweet, obedient children. I put my phone on charger earlier that morning because I was uh, my plan for the day was to, to head out uh, and grab a coffee somewhere and sit in some quiet away from all the distractions of home or, or even work distractions and finish my preparation for today. And so I had put my phone and my computer on charge so that I could take them with me. So I grabbed those things off the charger, put them in my handbag and I heard a strange noise coming from Nora's room and I went into her room and there she is sitting on her bed still playing her iPad. Nora, I said, I thought I told you to put away your leap pad and find your drink bottle. Yes, mummy, I'm just finishing this, she said. No, Nora, now, I replied very sternly. She had failed to interpret that my instruction to her meant to do this right away. That was my unspoken expectation that came along with those instructions. Declan is potty training, so as we normally do to avoid accidents in the car, before we head out the door, we take him to the potty. So I left Nora with that instruction to do it straight away and took Declan to sit on the potty before finally getting into the car. And after a couple of minutes, once that process was finished, I heard a very familiar and annoying tune coming from the lounge room and I wandered out and Nora was there dancing along with this dancing sloth that she received for her birthday. I said, Nora, we're going to be late. And to this she got really upset because Nora hates getting into trouble. And so I pulled her in clothes and I gave her a cuddle and I said, Nora, what are we doing right now? And she said, we're getting ready for school. I said, that's right, and what did mummy ask you to do? And to that she let out a cry, I don't know. Nora, I said, you need to listen to mummy. She had finally followed through on part of my instruction to put the first toy away, but Upon doing that, not being able to instantly see her water bottle, she obviously had given up and got, gotten distracted by this other toy that she'd just recently got for her birthday. And so she wasn't really being naughty, but it was still frustrating because my expectations weren't being followed through with. Because when I said to her, you need to listen, I wasn't just meaning you need to hear me, was I? Because this word can simply mean to hear something or it can mean to listen intentionally and to follow through, to obey. Wrapped up in that one word, 
listen was really the expectation that yes, Nora would hear what I was saying, but that she would also follow through um, and do what I requested of her. That she would do that straight away and that if it wasn't possible to complete that straight away, if her water bottle didn't immediately appear in front of her, that she would contribute some effort and perseverance and actually go looking, go in search of her water bottle. So that's just a little window into our <laughs> weekly mornings and some, a story I'm sure that most of you are familiar with if you've spent any time around small children. But our language is both interesting and confusing because so many of our words have varying meanings depending on their context and the way in which they're used. And the same is true for the language uh, used in the Bible. So what exactly did the biblical authors mean by the use of the word listen? And how did that word Shema evolve to mean something even more significant to the Israelite nation? That's what we're going to consider this morning. So we look now to the Bible Project video on this week's theme, this week's word, Shema. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Now the first word of the Shema is hear or listen, which in Hebrew is pronounced Shema. That's where the prayer gets its name. Now Shema is a really common word in the Hebrew Bible, and it's obvious why. Hearing is a very universal activity. It's usually connected with the ear, as in Proverbs chapter 20, ears that Shema and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Now that seems basic enough, but if you look at the other ways that Hebrew authors can use the word Shema, they use it to mean more than just let sound waves enter your ear. In Hebrew, Shema can also mean pay attention to or focus on. So when Leah, who wasn't loved by her husband Jacob, she has a son and she names him Simon, or in Hebrew, Shimon, because she says, the Lord has Shamad, that I am unloved. So Shema means to hear and to pay attention to and even more. It can also mean responding to what you hear. This is why so many of the cries for help in the book of Psalms begin with a call that God listen. Psalm 27 verse 7, Shema my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful, answer me. So asking God to Shema is at the same time asking God to act, to do something. It's similar to when God asks people to listen. Like when the people of Israel come to Mount Sinai, God says, if you shema me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Now there's a couple interesting things about this verse in Exodus. In Hebrew, the word shema is repeated twice in this sentence to give it emphasis. If you shema shema, meaning listen closely. But also notice that from God's point of view, listening is basically the same as keeping the covenant. So when God asks the people to Shema, what he means is that they listen and obey. And that's the last fascinating thing about Shema. In ancient Hebrew, there is no separate word for obey, meaning to carry out the wishes of someone who knows better than you or is in authority over you. So in the Bible, if you want to say, I will listen and do what you say, you use the single word Shema. In Hebrew, listening and doing are two sides of the same coin. This is why later in Israel's history, when the people were breaking their covenant promises to God, the Hebrew prophets would say things like, they have ears, but they're not listening. The Israelites, of course, could hear just fine, but they weren't actually listening or else they would act differently. And so in the end, listening in the Bible is about giving respect to the one speaking to you and doing what they say. Real listening takes effort and action. And that's the Hebrew word Shema. As has been part of our habit in this uh, January series, we're going to have some questions now that uh, if you're watching with a group, you can discuss together. If you're on your own, uh, why not grab your journal or a piece of paper and jot down some thoughts. Um, but the first question for today to consider is what stood out to you about what the word listen means in the Hebrew Bible? How is it different or similar to how you usually use the word?
The first passage we're going to look at today is Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through to 9. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. How would you describe Yahweh's character? What do you believe Yahweh cares about? It's easy to forget about who Yahweh is and what he cares about as we go about our daily life. With Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 and 9 in mind, what are some ways you can remind yourself of who Yahweh is on a daily basis? How do you think Yahweh feels about current events? One of the most famous passages in the book of James is about not just being a hearer of the word, but being a doer. The author compares these hearers to those who see themselves in the mirror and then immediately forget what they look like. The point is that hearing and doing cannot be separated. We don't truly see the mirror if we forget the image in it. And we don't truly listen if the message doesn't change us. We were made to reflect the image of God, but we forget who we were made to be when we do not let God's character shape our thought patterns and our attitudes, our affections and actions. We are not truly listening to God's life-changing words if our lives are not changed. Listen to that again. We are not truly listening to God's life-changing words if our lives are not changed. Let's look now to our second passage, James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. 
What stood out to you as you read this passage? According to this passage, what does a pure reflection of God's character look like? What gets in the way of that pure reflection? Where in your life have you heard what God said but forgot to put it into action? Ask him for help and commit to practice what you learned this week.
Let's pray. Almighty God, in the world in which we live, there is just so much noise. There is so much going on that can grab our attention and that pulls us in another direction. Our lives are so busy we struggle to listen well to each other, let alone slow down enough to listen to you. But we must. And we must do more than hear you, Lord. We must listen and let your words soak into our hearts to saturate our minds and transform our ways of thinking until our minds and hearts and whole selves are transformed by your word. As we listen to you and as we work to put the things you teach us and tell us into practice, we ask again that your spirit will do a work in us and continue to transform us so that we become greater representations and reflections of your love to the world. We pray this in and through the one who showed us what it looks like to live a life that truly listens to the voice and will of the Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I bring to you the benediction. You are God's servants and his most beloved creation. The Almighty longs to connect and communicate with you. He is always in pursuit of you. So listen. Listen well as he speaks to you through his word, through his spirit, and through each other. Love and serve the Lord in the strength of the spirit, and may the peace of Christ be with you, the strong arms of God sustain you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Again, we want to say a huge thank you to the Bible Project who have created the resources that we've used today and in other weeks throughout January. If you're wanting to look a little bit deeper into this topic or look at some of the other topics available or do some of the, um, the book studies that they have, they have produced, um, head over to thebibleproject.com. The website is below me now. And have a look at all of the uh, huge range of resources available there. And join us again next week, which will be our final week in this January series before we return to our regular format. And in our final week in this series, we will be looking at the word and the theme, witness. God bless. We'll see you next week.